All right, so today what I'm going to be doing is putting together an external solid state drive. What I've got here is a M.2 solid state drive enclosure and a M.2 SATA interface based solid state drive. The enclosure right now is about $17 on Amazon and this solid state drive is $69. That brings the total to $87 when I combine these together for a 512 gigabyte external solid state drive. If I were to um, buy a completed external solid state drive from Amazon, they're well over 100, sometimes 110, 120. Um, so by doing this yourself, you can actually save quite a bit of money. So here's the enclosure. Pretty compact. Comes with a data cable. And let's see, looks like some uh, mounting hardware. As well as a little sticker. Not sure what that's for. Let's see what the manual says. Okay, so slide out the uh, slide out the board. Put in your drive. Secure it with a screw. Slide it back in. Plug in your cable. Okay. I'm not sure what that's for. Let's go ahead and open up the solid state drive. Alright, so there's the M.2 solid state drive. Let's see about sliding the board out. Doesn't really say how to do that in the instructions. Doesn't look like it's secured with any screws at the moment. More than likely the screws in there will do that through these two holes. The question is how do you slide it out so you can't push from that side. Okay, I'm just kind of getting my nail in here. Let's see if we can pull it out that way. Feels like it's going to come out. Oh, a little cover come off. Okay. So the cover came off. What? Oh, it just comes out by gravity. Nice. Okay. So it'll go back in that way. break into the bag. Alright, so M.2 drives, they basically just fit into the slot right there. Push them in at like a 30 degree angle and then lay it down. So I need to put in one of these right here. So the way this works is you take the solid state drive, stick it in at about a um, 30 degree angle, push it all the way in until it stops. You take this little, I don't even know what to call this, um, put it right there on the solid state drive. So basically it kind of looks like that, you lay it down and then you take one of these silver screws um, they give you a, um, a little screwdriver comes with it it's not very magnetic though so it's kind of hard to pick up I'm going to use one of mine from iFixit get it approximately there and then just screw it in Just like that. So then you should be able to just give it a little wiggle and get it to go. It's a tight fit. All the way down. And we got the 
cover, which will lay right in there. And then the black screws are going to hold it into place. Just like that. And then its cable will plug in. And there's a 512 gigabyte external solid state drive. And it looks like they gave us double the amount of hardware we actually needed, um, which is nice, I mean, just in case you lose them. Before I continue on with the video, I want to show you something. I have connected the external solid state drive I just put together, the 512 gigabyte one, to my main work computer. Now, when you put the drive together yourself, it's not going to have a partition, um, so it won't show up as a drive letter. So if I click on the File Explorer, these are all the drives I have in my computer. They're mostly hard drives. A few of them are solid state drives. But the, um, the new drive is not showing up here. To create a partition on it, what you have to do is right click on Start and go to Disk Management. And it'll come up and recognize that it, there's a new drive and it needs to be initialized and then partitioned and formatted. Um, for something like this, you're better off choosing GPT. If you want to leave it as MBR, that'll work fine too. But I'm going to change it to uh, GPT. Click OK. And I'll scroll down here on the list and find it. And here it is. It's um, recognized as a 476 uh, gigabyte drive. I need to right click on it and do New Simple Volume. Next. Next. It's going to give it the F drive designation. If you want to change it to something else on your computer, you can click and choose whatever is available, but F drive is fine. I'm going to click Next. The volume label, I'm going to mark this as ext SSD for external SSD. Not really important, but uh, it gives you the option. And you definitely want to leave Perform a Quick Format checked, otherwise it'll take a really long time to format the drive. Next, finish. Should just take a few seconds, and there it is. It popped it up. So it's called ext SSD drive F. And back here on my main list of drives, there it is showing up now. Now back to the rest of the video. This is basically just for me. Uh, at the moment, what I'm using uh, as an external drive um, is something like this. It's, uh, this is also from uh, from Sabrent, the same company that makes the, uh, the little M.2 enclosure. And basically what you do is you uh, take the cover off and you take a drive, either a hard drive like this one or a solid state drive. Stick it in there like that. Put this little foam on top. Sandwich it together and close it up. And there's a external hard drive or solid state drive. And at the moment uh, in my to-go bag uh, that I take with me out, I have um, one like this where it has a hard drive in it. Uh, the thing about hard drives is they're, uh, they're quite a bit slower than solid state drives and also um, they don't handle uh, being bumped around very well, especially if they're running. Um, if this were to, uh, to fall while it was running attached to a computer, it would almost certainly um, run the risk of failing. Whereas a solid state drive, I mean, you can tap this thing, it doesn't really care. As long as you don't physically like break it, it's fine. This is also a lot more compact than this setup right here, which is important in my, uh, my to-go bag that I take around with me everywhere. Now, you could um, replace uh, this hard drive with a solid-state drive, and you'd get essentially the same speeds uh, that this uh, more compact version uh, will give you. But, you know, it's a little bit bulkier. Now, I mentioned the speed difference um, on an external hard drive base setup. The best speed you're going to get is probably somewhere around 45 megabytes per second. And that varies a little bit from drive to drive. Whereas a solid state drive like this one, uh, which is an M.2 SATA based, I'm probably going to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 megabytes per second. About 10 times as fast compared to a hard drive setup. Now there is an option to go even faster than this. Whereas this is a M.2 SATA SSD which means it, it goes through the SATA interface. Uh, there's also M.2 NVMe solid state drives and enclosures. 
and those can give you about double the speed of what this one can do for a little bit more money, but it may be worth it to you. The, the reason I didn't go with a uh, NVMe solid state driving enclosure is in order to get that double the speed of what this can do right here, you also have to have a USB-C type connector. And it's pretty much what you find on most newer, um, higher-end um, cell phones at this point. Um, it's a different interface, and it does allow for um, up to, I believe, 1,250 megabytes per second. The downside is that uh, it's not compatible with everything. Most computers I run into, including mine, don't have USB-C uh, connectors where you can plug in one of those faster drives. I very rarely see computers uh, at this point uh, that do have this. So yes, it would be faster if the, uh, the connection was there on the computers I actually use, but uh, for the moment, it's just not a viable option for me, maybe in a few years. And before I go, I want to mention uh, something that I find most people don't know, um, including people who are in the computer industry have no clue about this. So there's, there's a difference between the speed of the drive itself and the interface. So this interface, um, it's USB 3.0. It will go up to 600 megabytes per second in speed, theoretically. It's usually somewhere around 500 megabytes in the real world. But if you use a hard drive, you're only going to get about 45 megabytes per second speeds out of it. Um, so another option for transferring files from one computer or another or backing up is um, a flash drive. Uh, these are also called jump drives, thumb drives. They have multiple names, but basically it's a USB interface um, with uh, flash storage on it. And so this one right here is a USB 2.0 interface, which means its um, theoretical limit is 60 megabytes per second. And you can generally tell 2.0 connectors because the um, little bit of plastic here in the middle is black. Um, there's also USB 3.0 flash drives and connectors. And you can tell 3.0 because the connector right here has a blue color to it. So this is approximately 600 megabytes per second throughput in the interface. And this is around about 60 megabytes per second. So about a 10 times difference. But on this uh, 3.0 interface flash drive, the actual chips inside of it can't send or receive data at anywhere near that. Uh, for the most part on something like this, you're lucky to get maybe 20 megabytes per second, even though the interface itself is capable of 600 megabytes per second, roundabout. If you ever looked for a flash drive, and if you look, you can get, say, a 32 gigabyte um, flash drive, USB 3.0, um, for like 15 bucks. But if you look down further on the page where things get more expensive, you'll find one, you know, the same capacity for, say, $80. Well, why is that? Uh, the reason is that for the more expensive one, the flash chips on the inside are faster and more capable of using that 3.0 interface. They don't go anywhere near the 600 megabytes per second, but you might get 200 or 250 megabytes per second actual real-world speed out of that. The advantage of going with a uh, M.2 solid-state drive, either a SATA interface like this one or the NVMe interface and drive that are a little bit more expensive, is you get a lot closer to the, uh, the actual throughput that the interface is capable of. So this USB 3.0 interface is capable of about 600 megabytes per second. The M.2 SATA-based uh, solid-state drive in here is most likely going to get somewhere around 450 or 500 megabytes of actual throughput. And if I went with a uh, USB 3.1 Type-C interface and a M.2 NVMe drive inside of it, that would be a lot closer to the, the 1250 megabytes per second throughput. So I hope this information was useful to you. Um, so again, this is a um, an external enclosure from Amazon. Uh, it's made by Seabrent. The enclosure itself is $17 at the moment, and the drive inside it, this uh, M.2 SATA-based 512 gigabyte solid-state drive, is $69. For a grand total of about $86, 
um, doing this yourself, putting it together, uh, this same capacity drive would be around $110 or $120 if you bought it all together without putting it together yourself. So I think this is a really good option to save some money. And if you do have um, USB-C connectors on your devices, you can pay a little bit more money for an enclosure and solid state drive that support the NVMe um, transfer speeds and will get you closer to 1250 megabytes per second for a little bit more money if you do have the, uh, the USB-C connectors on your devices. That's certainly an option. Thanks for watching.